The RCMP have responded to four armed robberies since October 12th, three to local liquor stores and one to a local financial institution. Ferris says the city plans to have a consulting company in place by mid-April and complete the master plan by the end of September. Simpson admitted the numbers were down this year and attributed that to the economy. Nonetheless, she felt the evening's festivities went a long way towards paying for the spray park. Organizers say that while the purpose is to celebrate indigenous cultures, they also hope to attract people from other backgrounds as a way of driving tourism for the band. With the plan approved in principle, city staff will now be working on the bylaws which will bring it into effect, which they will present to council on March 14th. Foster says that while attendance has dipped in the summer, she expects it to pick up again in the fall when school resumes. Organizers say they plan to bring the festival back next year, except that they plan to host it on a weekend so more people can attend. Those hoping to do their part for the Ronald McDonald's house haven't missed their chance as 10 cents from every Happy Meal is donated to the house year-round. As the situation in Fort McMurray continues to get worse, a Fort St. John man has offered his help to the Alberta government. Jeff Kelly, owner of Safeguard, a fire safety training and consulting company, has 30 years of experience facing his first wildfire in B.C. in 1986. When he saw the devastation of the forest fire ravaging the city, he and his employees wanted to help. Our staff is a group of people who basically like to make a lot of things better and we can make the biggest difference in Fort Mac right now. We've offered out our services. We have a ton of equipment available to, to look after these fires. Amongst them, we have a fire truck. We have um, 3.8 miles of sprinkler systems. Kelly first reached out to the province of Alberta on Tuesday offering his services and aside from an email saying his request was being sent to the appropriate area, he has not heard anything further. The government declined to be interviewed but issued a statement saying the fire commissioner is focused intently on the task at hand. Manpower isn't the issue, the weather and the nature of the fire is. Resources required are available. It is important to ensure we have the proper resources available to meet the needs in all areas of the province. Kelly says he doesn't understand why the province would turn down his offer of help, considering how much experience he and his employees have. We are right next door to two of these major fires. High level, we're five hours away. Uh, Fort Mac, we're nine hours away. And we come with equipment. We come with a lot of specialized equipment. Some of these firefighters are coming out of Ontario, even Mexico. It takes forever to get them here and they can't come with equipment. We're ready to go. Since the evacuation began, the fire has grown about 10 times in size. But as Premier Rachel Notley mentioned earlier this week, the focus remains on protecting lives first. Hugh Smith, CJDC TV News, Fort St. John. Oil and gas workers in Fort St. John have made their voices heard. Hundreds of people joined the convoy from the south end of the energetic city to Charlie Lake for the rally in support of LNG projects in the province. Organizers say the response was overwhelming. When I started this with two people last December, I didn't expect this to be this big. And when we started planning this track rally, uh, we were only expecting 60 to 80. And uh, the latest count as of now is around 400, more than 450 vehicles joined this track rally. So I'm very, very happy. Rallies were also held in Terrace and in Fort Nelson, which saw more than 300 trucks attend. Many attendees came bearing signs, all of them showing their support for growth in the industry. We're swimming in natural gas that so we don't have a market for. This whole rally is about trying to, trying to uh, get our gas to a, to a market that may or may not exist. And uh, if we are indeed short of uh, electrical uh, power in, in BC or Canada, let's burn some natural gas to uh, generate that. The rally also played host to many dignitaries, including MLA Pat Pym and MP Bob Zimmer, who showed up to show their support for LNG projects. My main challenge is to the Prime Minister and to Cabinet is uh, do the right thing and support LNG in BC. It's, it's good for BC, it's good for Canada and good for the environment. Zimmer also called on the crowd to email Trudeau and the Cabinet to voice their support for LNG. Hugh Smith, CJDC TV News, Fort St. John. Financially embattled ICBC says it has spent nearly $100,000 more in damage claims for a luxury race car than the vehicle is actually worth. The public insurer is still embroiled in a court battle over the claims and repairs to the 1990 Ferrari, which the plaintiff crashed into a utility pole in September 2012. Five and a half years later, the repairs have yet to be completed, but ICBC says its payments have already well exceeded the cash value of the car, which an arbitrator pinned at just under $700,000. The case is ongoing. 
New research reveals the recent recession is taking a toll on people's health. The UCLA study tracked 46,000 adults for two years during the worst of the crisis. It showed blood pressure and glucose levels rose during the recession, especially among older homeowners and people still working. The researchers say those people are especially vulnerable to psychological fallout of economic downturns because they are at risk of losing jobs and houses. The Fort St. John Hospital Foundation is reminding its bravest and soon-to-be baldest residents to register for their biggest annual cancer fundraiser. The 19th annual Bluey Day will be held at the end of May, and registration is officially open. The Foundation's goal is to have at least 50 participants show their support for cancer patients, survivors, and remember those who lost their battle by shaving their heads. Those who are um, brave and shave are the ones who do the fundraising for us. They uh, approach their friends, neighbors, family, um, strangers who are passing by their house on the street um, to donate uh, money that goes towards cancer diagnosis and treatment here in the Fort St. John Hospital. In 18 years, the hospital foundation has raised over $1.8 million for the cancer ward. The event also drew in funds for the hospital's new MRI machine and upgrades to the CT scanner. This year, the foundation's goal is set at $100,000, which will go towards a third vein viewer. The chemotherapy is often really hard on people's veins, and so the vein viewer is actually a, a really exciting piece of equipment. Nobody likes getting poked. Um, they certainly don't like getting poked multiple times, so this piece of equipment identifies, shows the veins, and um, hopefully simplifies it down to just one poke. Bluey Day will be held on May 26th at the BC Ambulance Building on 96th Street. You can contact the Foundation's office for more information on fundraising, volunteering, or donating. An environmental group is asking the public to keep their distance from wild animals in the wake of the Moose Rider investigation. <laughs> in the now infamous video, a man can be seen jumping from a motorboat onto the back of a moose that was swimming through the water. Two Fort St. John men have been charged in the incident. Environmentalist group The Fur Bearers says the incident is indicative of a larger problem. We have been hearing about a huge amount of uh, people interacting inappropriately, inappropriately with wildlife, very much to try and get selfies or sort of those magical moments they imagine are possible. And it's almost always ending poorly. The group says tourists hand feeding wild bears in Banff National Park has created a condition known as proximity tolerance, where animals associate humans with free food. If they come up to you, presuming you've got a rice cracker like you received last week, uh, you know, it, it could end up in a very violent conflict. And what is very likely to happen, and in fact what has been happening, is these animals end up being killed by conservation officers or police because they are deemed to be irreparably uh, linked to people food. Both environmentalists and conservation officers say that a good rule of thumb to use around wildlife is to keep a safe distance because even with good intentions, coming into contact with wild animals can do more harm than good. Hugh Smith, CJDC TV News, Fort St. John.